The following segment is sponsored by iCare Associates. Welcome back, everyone. With back to school season, it can bring some new challenges for your kids or grandkids. But one of those challenges shouldn't be vision problems. That's why it's so important to have that annual eye exam for your kids or grandkids. This morning, we are hearing from an expert, Dr. Karen Vinoy from Eye Care Associates, joining us now to talk about some things you should keep in mind. Dr. Vinoy, thanks so much for joining us Good this morning. morning. Thank you. Of course. Um, so first of all, with some kids starting school, and depending on the age, what's a good time to go ahead and get that first eye exam in? So a lot of people think that children don't need eye exams until they're ready to start school, but mm. we actually recommend children have their first eye exam between 6 and 12 months. Wow. And so we can find out a lot of things about the visual system at a very very early point. Mm -hmm. And a lot of doctors in Alabama and, and eye care associates participate with the American Optometric Association's infancy program, which mm. actually provides a free screening for children between 6 and 12 months just to make sure there are no issues. So after that, we recommend children have an eye exam when they're in their younger toddler years and then definitely before they start to school. Mm -hmm. what, what does an eye exam look like for an infant between ages 6 and 12 months? So really not a lot for them because they can't tell us which is better, right. one or two. <laughs> um, so, But we dilate their eyes to check for any health issues, but we can also use a, an instrument called a retinoscope that tells us the power of their eyes to make sure that their eyes are developing properly. So um, it's pretty, pretty easy to do the eye exam. It's actually sometimes easier to do an infant eye exam than on a toddler. So. I can totally imagine that. Yeah, with a 20-month-old myself, um, yeah, you get, you're fighting, you know? Yeah, for sure, <laughs> exactly. for sure. Uh, now, if somebody does have, maybe a school-age child does have an eye exam um, and there are issues, where do you go from there? So, for a lot of children, it's just mainly getting them into a pair of glasses, um, but what we're finding now is that um, with the challenges of a digital age, we're having a lot more screen time, so that is definitely an issue with a lot less, um, the studies are showing that outdoor time is down, which is also kind of perpetuating um, some myopia, which is what we would call nearsightedness, where mm -hmm. we can't see things far away, seeing the board and things like that. So it's really important to think about limiting screen time for children and getting them outdoors, two hours of outdoor activity a day, and some of the studies are showing that that can delay if the child is already predisposed to become nearsighted. Mm. Um, so we want to try to do that. Also, now, um, we are not just treating myopia from a standpoint of putting glasses on children. We can actually stop the progression of myopia or nearsightedness by using contact lenses that will slow that process down or eye drops. So it's not just about putting glasses on children now, we actually have a method to stop children from becoming more nearsighted. So that's an exciting new kind of development in the last decade or so that we're seeing um, take a lot of um, children from just putting them in glasses to actually preventing them from becoming to have to need glasses, is, which is a great opportunity. That's really interesting. So you said one of those treatment options to, or preventative options is drops. How does that work? So uh, atropine is a drop that we use to dilate the pupil. It's a very strong drop, but in lower concentrations. Um, and actually, UAB School of Optometry was just involved in a study with atropine, low-dose atropine, determining what kind of concentration of that drop, but um, it's a diluted drop made by a compounding pharmacy, and we use that drop every night at bedtime for children to slow down the progression of nearsightedness in their eyes while they're growing. So, wow. And I've so, seen great success in my practice with this, um, and it's been, it's been an amazing opportunity to, especially when a parent is very nearsighted and they're worried that their child has become as nearsighted as they are, mm -hmm. because genetics does play a role in, in those things. So if, you're, if you have eye problems, there's a propensity for your children to also have similar eye problems as mm -hmm. well. Now some parents may be wondering, are there side effects that go along with this drop too that people need the, to be The drop about? would be, um, the side effect could be um, if they have lighter colored pupils that it might dilate their pupil a little bit, but mm -hmm. you work with your doctor to get the right concentration and then follow up regularly to make sure that the drops are effective at the concentration that you're using. So mm -hmm. you just, you know, you're going to follow up closely with your doctor to make sure that everything is okay with that. Like yeah. with any other medicine, yes, making sure yes, that this is absolutely. A, doing what it's supposed to be absolutely. doing. That's mm -hmm. really interesting. Anything else we should all keep in mind um, when it comes to eye health in general? So I think the biggest thing too is that we automatically assume if someone has poor vision that they have unhealthy eyes and mm. if they have great vision that they have healthy eyes, but that is not, they're not synonymous. So 
um, just because you have good vision, you still need an annual eye exam or to check on the eye health of your eyes because there are things that don't affect vision that affect the health of the eye. And you can have vision that's poor and still have a very healthy eye. So they're not, just, just because you have good vision doesn't mean you should avoid the eye doctor's office. Sure, and that's something that I think a lot of people might think. And yeah, they say, absolutely. well, I've never had to go. Well, it might be time to go and get it checked out just in case you don't want those issues to crop up. Dr. Vinoy, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. I just want to say, too, also, just children, um, so much of what they're learning in school is dependent on their vision. Mm. And so that's the biggest point that we want to make sure children don't fall behind and become more um, delayed in their learning because of their vision, and mm -hmm. that's something that is easily fixed. Of course, and so being able to schedule that eye exam, get things checked out, and if there is an issue, then work on correcting Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Dr. Vinoy, we appreciate your Thank time. Thank you so much. It of was great course. to be here. You t yes, we appreciate you being here. There's more talk of Alabama just ahead after the break. Stick around. <laughs>